The forces in a free body diagram can be compared as vector arrows using a scale vector diagram. Remember that forces are vectors that can be represented as arrows. Let's consider a box with two forces acting on it. We can take these forces and create a scale vector diagram by drawing out A and B using a ruler. The arrows should be drawn so that the second force starts where the previous one ends. But how long should we draw each arrow? The length of each arrow in the scale vector diagram should be proportional to the magnitude of the force it represents. Remember that the length of a vector arrow represents its magnitude, so we need to choose a suitable scale for the diagram so that it takes up most of the page, but it's also easy to convert. So in this example, we've chosen 1 newton to equal 2 centimetres. These might not be to scale on your screens, but the 4 newton force is represented by an 8 centimetre arrow, and the 3 newton force by a 6 centimetre arrow. So why exactly are scale vector diagrams so useful? Well, the resultant force is represented by the arrow joining the start of the first force to the end of the last force. And by resultant force, we mean a single force that has the same effect as the individual forces. You're not expected to find the resultant of the perpendicular forces mathematically at GCSE, but we can draw in the resultant force using a straight line, which has the same start and end as the other forces. So we can measure this arrow to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Let's have a look at another example. At a certain point in time, a football experiences a 6 newton downward gravitational force and a 10 newton horizontal drag force as it flies through the air. Find the magnitude of the resultant of these two forces. So for step one, we need to choose a suitable scale for a scale vector diagram. We want a scale that works in the space we have, and it's good to do this at the start to make the working easier. So in this example, we've chosen one centimeter to equal two newtons. For step two, we want to draw the scale diagram using this scale. So we use this scale of one centimeter to draw our 10 newton force as a five centimeter arrow and the six newton force as a three centimeter arrow. For step three, we need to draw in the resultant force. Then for step four, we want to determine the magnitude of the resultant force using the scale. The resultant force is measured to be 5.8 centimeters. We can then convert it back to newtons by multiplying it by two to give 11.6 newtons. But what happens to our diagram if the forces are already balanced? The forces are balanced if their scale vector diagram forms a closed loop. So as an example, take this box with multiple forces acting on it. We can accurately draw a vector diagram using a one-to-one -one scale. This shows us that the forces are balanced, as when we add all of the vectors together, it gives zero, as the final vector ends at the start point. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.